Hey, it's uh, Larry. Back going to do a little bit more just disassemble of the leftover stuff. Uh, one of the comments in the last video was saying they were having a hard time separating the ring gear from uh, the differential. And I was like, well, okay. So I'll just show them. But basically, first thing, got left hand threads. So we're in kill mode on the impact. Look like you're going to tighten it. This is a 273 and we're saving the gear. And no cliff, sorry, we're going to uh, scrap this differential. I don't have any reason to save it. I scrap metal a few times a year to keep the garage cleaned up. Not that you can tell by looking right now. But but I haven't done it in a while, so we're going to do a cleanup later this week and haul scrap. So these righty loosies, lefty tighties, that's right, I said it that way. Save the bolts, they're good. Always use a six point socket when you're uh, doing stuff like that. So impact bounce around, it'll. Uh, you know, could scar it up. Now, we're not reusing this race down here that's, and this might turn out sloppy, but once again, the brass hammer, see the back face of the gear, it hangs past the differential. That is where you would use a dull ended chisel, you know, with a rounded end, not a sharp one. Or in this case, I use a GM control arm bolt because they're tapered a little to make a dull punch. See, it's already coming loose. You just put on the concrete so there's no cushion. You can just work a little bit on each side, spin it around. There's really not much to it. It's press fit for maybe three quarters of an inch. Yeah, I'm using old underwear for rags, that's right. Might have noticed, nobody said anything, but anyway, good ring gear. Magic. Voila. So, hope you enjoy. Hey, I thought I'd do some axle comparisons, because we're doing that 30 spline upgrade on the uh, 78 Firebird 8.5 axle. Here's an original 28 spline. And you'll notice that it gets narrower behind the splines and then it tapers towards the bearing size and it gets bigger but it does neck down behind the splines. And then uh, what you see here in the middle is some rusty 12 bolt Chevelle aftermarket axles. Mind you they have double sets of holes down there. I don't know what brand these were. They were a stock replacement but they're a 30 spline which is a bigger diameter than 28. But they also neck down a little bit, you know, before they go up to the bearing size. Now, mind you, the 28 spline and 30 spline are the same diameter once it reaches the axle bearing. So, obviously, if you were at a point of shearing off an axle on drag slicks or something, it's going to break where it necks down at. If you're like, say, you have a spool, you know, locking the axles, it's going to break off right here. Well, notice these. These are the new axles I bought at Rock Auto for a Chevelle because it's the same length as a, a second gen F body. But notice that uh, it's 30 spline, so it's bigger than the 28, but it actually stays the same diameter and then it necks up and gets thicker. And so it basically has the diameter that, at the, the uh, bearing surface all the way here and it doesn't neck down. So it's almost like this axle could have been done as big as 33 splines if they would have maintained it because that's the biggest aftermarket you can go to is a 33 which is a non-stock size but so I'm finding these uh, these Rock Auto axles were on they were Dana brand and 1541H alloy I think they were only about $60 a piece or something it was cheap so I gotta get studs to put in 3 8 thread studs because I don't want to change the snowflake wheel lug nuts but I just wanted to compare that uh, there's some big differences where the axle necks down behind the splines 
and this is great it necks up so that is a win on axle strength also wanted to just show I was uh, mocking up the 2 inch HVH super sucker spacer 4 hole tapered spacer on the uh, Pontiac Warrior or Warrior knockoff intake and uh, for the time being to fire it up the 800 AVS Edelbrock it'll be uh, going on the Catalina when the stroker motor goes in although I'm thinking of firing up this top end on the old motor before I pull it because it hasn't been cranked in a while I'd like to hear it run one more time so we might do that tomorrow so stay tuned we'll stick this on top because the uh, carbs already off on the other manifold so we'll just do a quick manifold swap because the water crossover is separated by the way so I don't break into the water I can just lift off the blue felpro gasket it'll release and go right back on at one man garage <laughs> 